I need you to take this seriously, Dad! I know you have another form! Find me with everything you've got! Hey guys, it's your host Julian. This week I sit down with veteran anime voice actor Mr. Kyle Bear, the voice of adult Gohan from Dragon Ball Z and Fat Gum from My Hero Academia. We chat some really cool con stories, Dragon Ball Z, My Hero Academia, and so much more. Kyle was a really cool dude to chat with, and uh, if you like this podcast, man, you're going to really enjoy his, The Intergalactic Boombox. Not only is it a dope-ass podcast name, but it's really cool stuff that Kyle puts together each and every week. Enjoy the show. Quick question, ladies and gentlemen. What's the most precious resource in the world? It's your time. So why would you spend it on the news? The Donut is a news brand, and they think the news absolutely sucks. It's boring, dry, and negative. So negative. It's near impossible to read and not think humanity's doomed. That's where the donut comes in. They turn this time-consuming, anxiety-ridden chore into a quick, guilty pleasure that ensures you'll never be the boring one in a conversation. Their goal is to make the news quick, engaging, and easy to understand. And did I mention, it's all 100% free. They set out to design a better, faster, more fun way to stay up-to-date on the world's happenings. One that makes you feel smarter, happier, and more hopeful about the future. It's fast, fun, and 100% free. Subscribe today at thedonut.co slash cartoon. That's the donut, T-H-E-D-O-N-U-T dot C-O. Kyle, man, it's been a long time coming. A lot of, hey, man, let's reschedule this on my part. I appreciate you being so flexible. Kyle, welcome to the show, man. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, everyone's trying to do that, that life work struggle to, to, to balance it all. And we're somehow forging ahead in this uh, whatever. Is it is it post pandemic or is it just a whole new wave of, of be careful because the numbers are rising? I don't even know anymore. What Dude. year is this? We don't even get a week without some bullshit. So apparently we're out of the coat. We're out of COVID and then the war of Russia and Ukraine. And we won't go deep into that. Cause like I said, I stay away from politics or anything pertinent like that. Cause this thing is supposed to be about fun. It's supposed to be about animation, cartoons, comic books, but it's just like, we can't get a fucking week without some bullshit. You know, you've got the war in Ukraine then you got COVID then you got the president falling off the bicycle. And then you've got people yelling at each other and then you've got this and you got that. You're just like, Jesus Christ. Can we just have one, one fucking day, just not even a week, just a day, day where we can just say, Hey, Kyle, how are you? Hey, Julian, I'm doing fine. Just shit like that, man. That just, is it too much to ask for Kyle? We get, we get, uh, little glimpses of regular life, uh, on the con scene for the past year. Uh, the cons open back up and I've been hitting a lot of them. And of course, yeah, there's a lot of mask there and, and varying degrees of, of carefulness but in general it's you know people have been jonesing to get back out on the cons and you know dress up or just get out there and just celebrate pop culture and they're doing it and it feels good to be out there and get some face time with my compadres and other uh, work colleagues that I've looked up to for a long time it's like oh my god I finally get to meet so and so they may be behind a mask but still this is really cool (laughs) And even some FaceTime with other people that I live in the same town as, but we never see each other because we're just, we're busy with our own thing. So um, that, that has been a blessing to have uh, that uh, semblance of uh, regular life, at least the one that I'm used to. Yeah, it's, it's really nice, man. Cause we went to, we didn't go this year. We went last year um, and uh, to our first con, I actually took my son to his first con last year and almost not almost because there's so many of you guys cast members from my hero, but there's uh, lady, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know this man right here, right in front of us, uh, not only Gohan from Dragon Ball Z, uh, fat gum from my hero academia. So we're going to do a lot of that talking. Um, yeah. You know, so um, he, he is balls deep in anime. I, it comes up so many times to fans. I apologize. You're going to hear this shit again. Uh, he is balls deep in anime. We used to started out watching cartoons and then I don't know what it was. I think it was probably, um, uh, during like right when the pandemic started, uh, that's when we first started watching my hero together. But 
a couple weeks into it, him and his friends, they were doing the Zoom thing for school. And then they were all talking about Naruto. Naruto had just hit Netflix, right? So Ooh. I wasn't the hugest Naruto kid growing up, um, but it was about the same age that he is now. He's 12, uh, was 10, 12 at that time, 10. Uh, that that Naruto hit it was the same time frame that it hit for me and my friends and shit like that. Um, yeah. So that's what just set off the entire anime thing. That went to that. He loves Seven Deadly Sins. That was his favorite. He has no. This is what I've noticed about my oldest son. And do you have kids? Before I tell you the story. Yeah, I've got a daughter. She's twenty six. So we're we're past all the schooling age and everything. <laughs> and she lives in Texas and I live here on the West Coast. But yeah, life is good. Well, it's, it's, it's weird. I don't know. Uh, Cause I've got a 12 year, 12 year old. And then we have a one year old and uh, like my, my, my oldest shows no allegiance whatsoever. Like everything that he's watching now is his favorite. Right. So it started out with Naruto and then it went to seven deadly sins and my hero and then attack on Titan and then this and that. But anyways, we're watching, we're watching, uh, or he's watching Naruto. And I'm like, dude, you, you like this stuff? And he was like, yeah. He's like, well, let's watch Dragon Ball Z. And he was like, all right. So there's a lot of filler in Dragon Ball Z, sadly. And when I was growing up on it, you just could not wait. You were running off the bus to get home to watch this, right? So we're sitting there, we're watching all of this stuff, and then we start bonding over my hero because he just tuned out of Dragon Ball Z. After about four episodes of power-ups, he was like, uh, Dad, I got to tap out. It's just not for me. Um, so we found my hero, right? We started watching my hero, and he gets sucked into this show and we go to the con for the first time last year and we're waiting and he draw he's starting in this phase uh, where he's drawing a lot and uh, he drew every character so you know chris sabat was there uh justin was there um just a, a lot of the main cast was there so he gave and he was super nervous he goes up this is his first con like i said he'd never been around this many people he's going up and he's handing people and he's not looking he's treating everybody like the gorilla in the encampment at the zoo you know so he's He's just, I, I made this for you. And the first one he got to meet was Lucy Christian, right? So the voice of Uraraka couldn't been sweeter, man. She came over and she took the picture and signed it and handed it back to him. He's like, no, no, that's, that's for you. And then she went and got a picture for him and signed it, made his whole day, man. So you guys getting the enjoyment from the cons, we're getting that same enjoyment. We're vibing off that same energy. We love seeing you guys and gals back out there because not only did you guys entertain us, when nothing was really happening, anime and animation really kept the Hollywood industry going. So hats off to you, man. You guys really, really pulled it through and you guys helped the fans and made new fans. So, I mean, I got to imagine it feels pretty good for you doing what you guys did these last two years. Hearing, hearing stories like that, especially first person from the people who come through and they, and it's just, I'm, I'm so grateful. We're, we're so blessed to, to, to have lines you know, people that will line up for hours, they've already spent their hard earned money just to get in. And now they're coming in and, you know, they're, they're, they're paying for autographs and we're, we're, you know, fist bumping and shaking yeah. hands and, and taking pictures and everything, but getting to hear those stories about how, what we get to be a part of affects their life, whether it's just entertainment or helping them through a rough patch or helping to inspire them. This is something we don't think about when we're in the booth recording. Mm -hmm. We're just there to satisfy, just get through the script and satisfy the director or the client. <laughs> and it's out, it's, it's in a vacuum, right? And then a few months later, it's out there in the ether. And then suddenly people are tweeting at us, hey, great job on so-and-so. It's like, oh, that's out? First world problem, I'm in too much. I have no idea that I had no idea I'm in that. Am I in that? Who am I in that? Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's really, really, uh, that's just one of the coolest perks in, in, in working on the creative side of uh, this industry is meeting the fans and finding out how much this stuff means to them. I and mean, that's just like, that's validation for what we do. You know, we are passionate about what we get to do mm -hmm. and to have it impact others around us. It's like, wow, this is like free therapy for people, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's very yeah, cathartic. It's yeah, it's very cathartic, man. Uh, who do you think you get recognized more as, or who do more, more people come up to you when you when you're at the cons in the booth? Do more people come up for Fat Gum or Gohan? Ah, uh, golly, it's about or neck is it a and different neck. Character. Yeah. Ever since the Fat Gum Pop came out, I've signed so many of those I lost count. So up there with Gohan. Yeah. And, and then I I let loose with the like next time on Dragon Ball Z. It's like, oh my god, you're that guy too. Cause it's like, how do you put that on a poster? It's, it's not a character. It's just an unwritten 
thing. So I'm blowing people's minds, which is another cool thing. It's like, what mutant superpower would you want? It's like, I just speak and then fan people explode. They just like, ah! <laughs> like they turn into like eight little eight year olds. It's like, that's cool. I like that. Do the voice, do the thing. You know, some people are like, oh, I can't do the voice. My voice is, uh, I can't do it. It's like, no, nah, man, these people came and spent their hard earned money. They want to hear the voice. So I am more than happy to say it. I don't mind repeating it over and over again, especially if they want to capture it on video and do, uh, you know, a cameo video shout out or, or an audio message for someone who couldn't make it or, you know, just talk some smack to, to someone else <laughs> in, you know, in a lighthearted, jovial way. It, it, it's really cool, man. And I've made this analogy, a, analogy a few times. And uh, you ever seen the movie Ratatouille? Yeah. So you remember that scene? Uh, it, it's, it's Ego. He's eating the Ratatouille at the end of the movie after Remy sends it out. And then he drops that fork. right? And he's transported back in time to a little kid when his mom was making him that dish of Ratatouille. Right. So that's what I equate you guys voice, like whether it's whether it's the animators I have on the comic book artists that they create something, they draw something, they write something or you guys, you voice something. It's it's you hear that voice and you're transported back in time to when the first time you saw Gohan beat the shit out of Cell or you the first time you saw Piccolo do this. Piccolo was always my guy. So I apologize ahead of time. He's, yeah, he's my guy, too. He's, he's he's my real dad. So, well, he's you know. the galaxy's greatest father, man. You know, I mean, the first it was funny when Dragon Ball Z first came out or when, we, when I first started seeing it. I'm in elementary school, maybe third, fourth grade. And this is when computers really started to hit for us, too. Right. So we're in computer class. They're teaching us computers and shit. I didn't know what a computer was. It's crazy how far, you know, 20 plus years, what we're doing with a fucking phone or a laptop. Right, man. So it's, we're in computer class and you could print one picture. Right. Everybody was printing Dragon Ball Z pictures because Dragon Ball Z, this is right at the height of the Frieza saga. Right. So we're printing off pictures and we're using this was like the first currency in that I can remember before money, before before Pokemon cars, before anything. It was pictures of Dragon Ball Z. And then people would have fucking folders. We didn't have folders for homework, but we had folders for these pictures that we would print off from computer class and we would trade with them and we'd go home and draw them and all this crazy shit. So. It's just trying, like, like I said, hearing you guys' voice slip into it, like, oh man, I remember where I was at. I was sitting on the couch when such and such was fighting such and such. So it's like I said, it's a cool feeling for us. And I got to imagine what's the craziest fan experience when it comes to a voice that you've thrown out there. Do you have one whenever you go to a con or somebody's come up and told, told you a really fun uh, con story, a really fun fan story with your voice? There's a lot of crossover. There's a lot of similarities in stories about racing home from the school bus every day tuning in and loving and hating the narrator because either it's the beginning of the episode or it's the very end. It's like, you know, when you hear him, you're it's over for the day yeah. or it's just about to start. And now we're going to see, you know, 10 minutes of stuff we already saw in the last one. And then now, you know, five minutes of new footage. And then next time on Dragon Ball Z, it's like they, they locked onto a formula and it worked. You can't deny it. Um, Golly, I mean, uh, just um, just fun stories like people sharing it with their friends and family. Yeah, you know, whether it's brothers or sisters, parents, even. I've heard stories of of kids turning their parents onto it. You know, usually it's just background noise for the kids, and then yeah. the parents are like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, whatever." And then suddenly they get sucked in, like, "Oh, oh, wow, what's this?" So now we're at the thing where. It goes from the cons were mostly kids attending and the kids would just drop uh, the parents would just drop them off. And now parents are attending the cons with their kids and they're introducing them to pop culture and anime and all that. And they're all cosplaying together. Here's a whole Saiyan family. Some people are even naming their kids after these characters. I've met That's a dope. kid Gohan before and it's like blowing my mind. That's so dope, man. Yeah, it's, it, that's one of the greatest things about these cons. You get to see people dress up. You get to see people just having fun without being judged. I mean, I don't know what it was. I got to imagine it was just like that. Might be even a little bit worse for you growing up. But being a dude into comic books and cartoons just as far back as the 90s and early 2000s, man, it was detrimental. Luckily, 
I was one of those hybrid nerds. So I loved cartoons and animation, but I was a huge basketball fan. I played basketball from like the age of eight all the way up until probably the second time I broke my ankle when I was in the Navy for a little while. Um, so I, I don't do it anymore because once you have a mortgage and you got kids that depend on you and shit, you kind of you kind of got to get rid of the extracurricular activities that might hurt you a little bit. Um, right. But it, it's, I got lucky cause I was in that vein where I could, I could, I was in one of both worlds. I could cross over into the, to the nerdy kids, but I could also go and speak to the kids that played basketball or were super into sports. So, but yeah. I got to imagine for you, man, being a nerdy guy yourself. I mean, was it a little bit difficult growing up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm a child of the seventies and eighties. So yeah, things, like comics and all that yeah there there was a stigma to that i was never bullied because i had a growth spurt early on so yeah. no one picked on me but i did love seeing that transition from like oh you're just an anime nerd to oh my god anime is not a dirty word anymore <laughs> it's cool to be a nerd and it's like something that hasn't changed is people are nerdy about different things yes. like you could be nerdy about basketball nerdy in sports people wearing the body paint and doing all this crazy stuff they do it for the love of sports yep. how is that any different than cosplaying or you know getting together with your friends and reading manga or comic books and sitting there crashing and like doing art well mm -hmm. now with the internet you know doing twitch streams and youtube and all that and people sharing their craft and and everything it's like this is this is like a golden age for this stuff it absolutely is man and uh keeping on the nerdy train of the anime man uh so last time we talked and ladies and gentlemen that's a lost episode some stuff got stolen so hopefully if if you're out there listening and you got my stuff maybe you might want to upload this so we can see the first 20 minutes of uh of the episode that me and kyle did not too long ago um <laughs> but uh i'd be remiss not to ask you man where were you when you got the phone call that hey we got this character we want you to play for my hero academia you remember you remember how early to into the show that they called you uh well i believe he shows up in the fourth season so they were either right at the beginning of working on that and the director colleen clinkenbeard uh actually reached out and said hey i have a character i'd like you to audition for and i go oh awesome it's like hey maybe i have half a shot at it if you you're actually thought of me to give a read for it so uh yeah i'm, I'm sitting here in la and they're in texas and I just go into my closet booth space and record a uh, fat gum audition. And I initially made him a little more cartoony. And then Colleen says, that's great, but let's, let's back off that and just use more of your natural youthful voice. And that was a great call because that's what seemed to have resonated with people. And, you know, I have one teenage voice. And so I've been able to use that <laughs> through the years for Gohan, for Kiva, for Kamina, and now fat gum so yeah it was uh pretty wild i love the character design just that alone just seeing that character going man he's cool he's a side character he doesn't get that much screen time in the big picture but it's always the side characters man that uh that uh, people have those love affairs with dude his so we 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 touched very little on it but i'm gonna bring it just a little bit back the first time we talked um the first scene, like I was so invested into this show right off the bat, like when when my son and I first start watching this show, my hero, uh, I've got it playing and I'm just trying to, you know, test the waters to see if we could watch something together and have a little bit of fun. Right. Um, yeah. Like I said, it's a couple of weeks into the pandemic and we're just looking for something to bond over because he was literally done with school fucking two hours into the day and you couldn't go anywhere. Like everything was even in Florida, man, not we could not go anywhere. Everything was locked down. Everybody was afraid because for the first couple months, everybody was scared, man. Nobody knew what was going on. You know, everybody was terrified that this was going to be the next black plague. So we stayed home for quite some time. So I was running out of shit. You can only draw on so many, so much paper. You can only play the same video game so many times. You, you got to do something to keep these kids entertained. And uh, so we start watching the show. And I remember I'm in the kitchen, I'm cooking. And then I'm not, I'm not watching. I'm watching it, but I'm not watching it. And I hear Chris's voice, right? All my, and I'm like, holy shit, that's Piccolo, right? And I pointed and my son's like, why are you pointing the TV? I was like, that's fucking Piccolo, dude. And he was like, well, who's Piccolo? I'm like, God, I'm a horrible father. How have I not showed you? I was like, wait, man, we watched Dragon Ball Z and you weren't into it. That's Piccolo, the green dude. He was like, oh, he's like, it's going to be one of those shows. And I was like, 
dude, just give it this, give the show a couple episodes. Let's, let's just see if we can watch this. So he's watching it. And then like after the first episode, he's not blinking and right? he's just sitting there staring at the TV. And I'm like, it's pretty good. Right. He's like, yeah, it's really good. Can we keep watching? Absolutely. Right. So flash forward to it's the part where all might your, 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 your part of this is coming up soon. I promise. But, uh, all might, right. <laughs> He's losing to all for one. It's, it's that scene. I think it's in season two, maybe three, um, where his flame gets extinguished and he does what a hero was supposed to do. And he gives his all right. He goes until the wheels fall off and he loses his quirk. Right. Um, and it's funny. My wife is sitting next to me and she was the only one working at the time and she was coming home for lunch. Right. So I'm sitting next to her and I'm literally like my hands are sweating. I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking rocking back and forth. I'm like, please don't kill this character. Please don't kill this character. Please don't kill the world's greatest dad. And my wife's like, you do realize this is fake. And I paused. I looked at her. And I'm like, I don't need any negativity right now. I need all the positive vibes to go towards this character so he will survive, right? So flash forward to this fight scene with Fat Gum and Kiroshima, right? So that scene with All Might, that scene with Fat Gum, and the scene with Lemelian, those three fight scenes. I've got goosebumps now just thinking about those three fight scenes, but that one in particular where fat gum becomes fit gum, right? Yeah. He becomes a character that sec don't take this wrong. Sexy as fuck, man. He went from thick two C's to fit and ripped. Right. So I'm just sitting here watching. I'm like, Oh my God. And then he's, you're hearing what he's saying to Kirishima after Kirishima Ghost plus ultra, essentially the same thing. All might did the same thing. Lemillion did. And you see fat gum doing the same thing. And I'm like, oh shit, please don't kill this character that I just met that I just, I'm starting to really like this character fat gum. Please don't kill him. Spoiler alert. If you haven't made it this far, he's still around. Um, but it's just watching this scene. Do you guys get, or watching any fight scene or invested like that? I got to imagine you guys have a piece of yourselves while you're giving these voices to these characters. Mm -hmm. So I got to imagine you're taking in just as much as we're taking in. Maybe it's a little bit deeper of a connection since you guys are you know, voicing these characters. But what is it like specifically for you when you have a scene that is so touching like this, that is so detrimental to push the story forward? What is it like for you guys as far as emotional, physical, and just anything going into it? Um. The honest truth is it's more of a clinical mechanical process because we don't get to see the footage ahead of time. We don't practice. There's no dry runs or rehearsals. The director has seen the episode. They know what the stakes are and they have to communicate to us in the session what the basics are, breaking down what, has, what is happening in the scene and why it's important. And then we're previewing each line in Japanese and then we're recording the English version, sometimes in one take, sometimes in three or four. It's like, that's great. Moving on, moving on. And so you're not watching this as, as you're voicing it. Well, you're watching it in the sense that you're previewing each line. So you watch it in Japanese, just the script breaks it down line by line. Yeah. And then we get to see how loud or soft to make it the, in its original context. And then we'll hear the three beeps. And on the fourth imaginary beep, that's where we say the line and make it match the lip sync. And if we can get the next line, great. If not, they'll, they'll stop and cue up the footage to that next part and then lather, rinse, repeat. So it's kind of like an assembly line process. So we have to, this is why we always tell people to be a voice actor, you gotta be an actor first. You have to, to hone your craft, to be able to think on your feet and be able to spit forth a, uh, something that that feels natural, that lifts the dialogue off the page, that is true to the character, and that the director is going to be able to, to go, yes, that's it. You've nailed it. Thank you. Because they're the one orchestrating. They're putting all the puzzle pieces together because actors record one at a time. Hmm. So I could be in a scene with Red Riot and they haven't recorded yet. So I don't know. I can't play off their performance and vice versa. So again, I, I have to trust Colleen in this case um, to let me know absolutely what I need to know and then hope it works out in the end. And then uh, once the final version comes out, when the fans see it, that's the first chance that I have to see it, believe it or not. Really? They don't screen it for you guys when it, when it airs? Man. No, there's no early things. There's very rarely ever any freebies. I think wow. we might might have a free subscription to the Crunchyroll, but uh, outside of that, 
Yeah, we're not getting free copies of the disc or or games or anything for the That's most crazy. part. That's crazy. You you would assume that they would at least do a little watch party. I just think when I think of that, like, and it's crazy. You guys do not play off of each other. You guys are in your own little worlds, you know. Because yeah. I hear so many times, I've I've had so many voice actors on here, and they said one of the worst things, not one of the worst things, because at this point I'm putting words in their mouth, but one of the hardest things for them was being separate from the other voice actors because everybody described it as playing in the same sandbox he was like because he would say something she would say something and then by the end of it they're telling us that hey you have to go sit in that corner you have to go sit in that corner because you guys are all in time out because we're all laughing they're laughing behind the booth the director's over here laughing and we haven't done anything for the script and the story and they're mad at us right now so he's but it was like when you have everybody the the entire ensemble in there he was like, you feed off of everybody's energy. So you're hitting here, you're hitting there, you're hitting peaks and lows and peaks and valleys, excuse me, that you didn't think you'd really get. But when you're sitting there playing with everybody, it, it just made it a lot smoother. So it's crazy to hear you watch this show. And I'm assuming you guys are all playing on each other. And then when I hear you guys tell me these stories, like, no, we're all generally in our closet or our built-in studios. And Rico told me this funny story about when he got cast as Lemelian. Uh, he was on vacation. I think he said Key Largo or somewhere in Florida. And he made, he was in his condo or his, his hotel. So he made a pillow fort in the middle of the living room. So a whole bunch of pillows around him. He's like, I had this bullshit mic. I didn't even have my travel mic. I completely forgot. And he was like, I'm sitting there trying to record. And he was like, I made a pillow fort. And he was like, I was hoping that was the best, man. So it's, it's just crazy to know that you guys are isolated. And when you watch this show, every you guys sound like i said you guys sound like you're in the same room you're feeding off of each other nobody's missing a beat nobody's missing a step because with these zoom calls you'll see it a lot of times it's like okay i stopped talking now kyle's gonna talk now kyle stopped talking now i talk so you see that 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 lag or that transition in between stuff like this so it's crazy to think at the highest level you guys are doing this flawlessly man you, this show is so beautiful it's so fun um, sticking on that topic for that fight scene for just a few. Now, when you're doing your lines and you're wrapped for the day, at that point, have you seen the entire fight sequence or are you only seeing your parts as fat gum? You're not seeing anything else. Correct. I'm just seeing my stuff because okay. that time is money and I'm being paid to, <laughs> to do the session. And like you had said, people are on different mics in different recording environments, and it's the genius and patience and, and talent of the engineers to work their magic in Pro Tools and put all the filters and plugins to make it all sound consistent. Mm -hmm. And our job as the actors is to do the best we can to make it sound natural, to make it sound like we are in the same room. And if we've been able to fool you guys, that's <laughs> awesome. If you can't tell, you know, the best special effect is one you can't tell is an effect. So 100%. If, we're, if we're able to pull that over on you guys, because <laughs> yeah, you, there's, there's, uh, there's just not enough hours in the day for us to, to sit here as, as an informed performance would be if we had the chance to study stuff ahead of time and all that. But alas, it is not meant to be. <laughs> now with the fight scene like that, uh, do you take, so obviously we all have bad days at work. We all have good days at work. And sometimes it's very hard to not leave work at work and vice versa, not leave home at home. You bring it, you know, it's, it's hard to keep those worlds separate. Yeah. So with something like a fight scene, like you're going at your voice in that, obviously you're only seeing the clips you're doing. You're not seeing the entire fight scene as it's going on, but I got to imagine throughout your entire career, there's, there might've been one or two instances where you've, maybe a fight scene or maybe a line or maybe something interaction with, with the character you're playing has kind of come home with you. And have you ever had, you know, a story like that? Or do you have a story like that where maybe something that kind of influenced you brought you brought it home with you? The closest I would say has come with the, the, the positive effect that Kamina and Gurren Lagan had, because mm -hmm. I've heard the story from so many fans saying that guy's positivity and that story and that show I was so depressed and it, it brought me back from the brink. And I heard that from so many different people online and in person at cons that it, it, the special, the specialness of it all just never diminished, no matter how many times I hear it. So I knew he was a fan favorite character when I went in to record it, but I had no idea the impact of a show, even to this day, people coming up going, oh my God, that performance, and this is a show from 2008. 
Mm -hmm. I think a dub came out in 2009. So here we are in 22. There's still people cosplaying. There's still people telling stories and showing their friends and family this one season show and how impactful it was. And that is so cool. Yeah. And, and, and having worked on shows and games, many of which sadly have just disappeared into obscurity because you can't have too much of a good thing. If there's, if there's a glut, it's hard for people to decide what they want to point to. It's like the Netflix problem. We got to cancel half the shows because not everyone knows all the good stuff yeah. that's on here. And they end up canceling good shows. Yes. Because your, your attention span is only so long and you can only dedicate so many hours to a, to a project. But uh, that one, that one has, uh, that one definitely got under my skin in, in the best possible way. Uh, a character that, that drives the story forward and that it means something even all these years later. That's really cool, man. Now, I, I always tell everybody I'm not a expert in the guest I have on and I'm fairly new to anime. So what anime is this? So I can write it down. I can check it out. Gurren Lagan, G-U-R-R-E-N. Logon is L-A-G-A-N-N. -N. Okay, I'm going to check that one out, man. I always like, uh, shit, man, that might be the recommendation you give everybody down the road because you, you get two all day. So you might have uh, uh -huh. that one. So who knows, man? We might have just dropped a little wait and see. Um, so who's an easier character for you to slip into? As a fact, I'm, like you said, you use that same voice, that youthful voice that Kyle has for different characters, man. So who's a little bit easier to slip into as far as your personality and your type? Is it fat gum? Is it Gohan? Definitely. Yeah. In, in the Gohan realm, I think Kiba, uh, Kiba's up there too. He's got this raspy thing going on. And uh, the only time it's difficult to do my own voice is if I have a session first thing in the morning and I literally just woke up and rolled into the closet, pants are optional, but Hey, you know, <laughs> they don't have to look at me. They just have to hear me. So I need know, to make a career change. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I was doing this the other day and I kept on, kept on having to gulp water and my voice kept cracking. It's like, note to self, don't schedule you first thing in the morning. It's like, yes, yes. Let's not do that. Uh, but it does come easily. Luckily. Mm -hmm. Uh, anything lower registers when you wake up is very easy to do. Um, doing the narrator that comes pretty natural because so many people just want to hear their lives narrated next time on Dragon Ball Z, Julian goes super saiyan. <laughs> and there you go. And then they go about their life and it's like, would you narrate my life? John brushes his teeth, but what will happen next? You ever seen that episode of Family Guy where Peter hires the marching band to follow him around? He's going throughout his entire day, and there's just a brass section and a tuba following him. <laughs> no, <laughs> you might have another career outside of cameo, Kyle. You might be able to follow people around and just narrate their life. That's uh, that's kind of what happened with uh, Doug Walker, the nostalgia critic. I did a video with him years ago for his YouTube channel, and. We were both guests at a con and he says, wouldn't it be funny if I come up to you, it's a skit. I come up to you. Hey, do the narrator. You're the narrator. Do the voice. And I do the voice. And then I just keep on doing the voice. And he's like, okay, thanks. Uh, no. I, and then he tries to get away, but I keep following him with my hand to my ear. And like, then Doug Walker thinks he can escape from the narrator. Does he have what it's, you know? And then, yeah, it's basically a skit called Kyle A. Bear is an a-hole. So <laughs> I'm going to write that one down too. Look that up. It's on YouTube. A bear is a lot of hits. That was the number one search result for many years, more so than my own website. <laughs> it's like I thought Kyle was a nice guy, and then they watch and they see, oh, okay. It's like you're it's gonna have people it's, that's it's just gonna read the title and they're gonna think you're an asshole for no reason. Other they than are, and then yeah, it's all over. My <laughs> reputation is smeared. I have no career. Oh, wait, <laughs> here we are in 2022. What? <laughs> You know who Larry Kenny is? Larry Kenny. I do not. So that's the uh, original voice actor for Lion-O from the Thundercats. He also was the uh, voice, uh, the Skittles, the Skittles commercial, Taste the Rainbow, Feel the Rainbow, whatever it was. Um, I believe he was Lucky from Lucky Charms. Uh, oh, for wow. the, yeah. And but he also did. You remember the show on VH1 Best Week Ever? No. No, it was uh, it was always this celebrity things best week ever. And they would go and say this is before the Kardashians ruined reality TV, um, but they would come in and 
he would just tell them, tell you about the celebrities week, whoever had the best week ever. It was one of those old VH1 shows. Uh, if you ever get the chance, but whenever you're, whenever I think about you as a narrator, the first thing I think of is like, man, Larry Kenny was a narrator too. And he played a really cool character and you've got four really cool characters. And that's not a disparaging remark against Larry Kenny, but it's just, it's crazy to see you guys have these characters you play that everybody knows Gohan, everybody knows Fat Gump. And then you throw out the narrator, you're like, oh, fuck, you're that guy too? Jesus Christ, man, what didn't you voice, right? So it's it's crazy to see what you guys get and what you guys lend your voice to. Um, which one's more satisfying for you to play, narrator guy or Gohan? Well, uh, there, there's definitely more of an emotional arc with Gohan. So uh, <laughs> I don't know, you, you, get, you get pretty into these, and next time on Dragon Ball Z, you know, so I like those. That's true. But being only the narrator on the Z portion of the franchise, you know, that, you know, I'm not on the, the, the current games or Kai or Super or any of that, but people remember watching Z back in the day. So Z was better, Kyle. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. So maybe, maybe that's what they're missing. They're missing Kyle, the announcer, man. Maybe who do we need to write to? I've got this blue pen that I've wrote down. Kyle A. Bear is an a-hole youtube video that's right uh and then dear crunchy roll dear bring kyle back as the narrator roll. just right. they don't have to because i already got this awesome character that i've been waiting 22 years for him to be great again and this summer we've got this new movie dragon ball super superhero where it's all about me and my dad i mean you know piccolo uh, <laughs> And other story elements too, of course, but the spoiler's already out there, but hopefully people will go pack the theaters on uh, August 19th and go even check it out in IMAX in North America for the first time. I'm definitely going to, man. Uh, what was it like returning to, because growing up as a kid, that's what you were led to believe. Gohan was going to be the baddest dude on the planet. And then, you know, he becomes the great Saiyan man. He meets Fidel. Dude, I love doing the great Saiyan man. He may be the Jar Jar Binks of Dragon Ball. I don't care. I have a blast doing him because he's just this over the top. He sounds like a game show host, like, oh, Defender of Justice. I sound like I'm turning into Gary Owens, like, meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. And then he's just like, nailed it. Yeah, I am the great Saiyan man. Did hey, you I worked hard on this, you know. <laughs> Did, did you ever so i loved playing him as uh well, what was it it was there was a couple there was a couple games that my, my brother and i would play mm -hmm. um and for the life of me i can't think of it was on playstation 2 so i can't it's a long time ago um but he would i, I want to say gohan you could choose as far as an alternate outfit you could choose great say a man or you could choose sure. Um, and my younger brother is one of those kids that can pick up any video game and instantly doesn't matter what it is. He's fucking, I, I can't stand him. Uh, he would just beat the brakes off, especially in fighting games. Cause his dumb little fingers move faster than my dumb big fingers. Um, so he would just beat the shit out of me and he would always use it. And I just remember a great say a man, just these one liners as he's beating the shit out of me. And I just remember, I said, like, where I hate this guy so much just because of my younger brother beating the shit out of me with your character, man. So I got to imagine you made a lot of people like me very angry, just get beaten there up. Was, by brother. <laughs> I do remember a great Sandman line in the third Budokai game from early on and back in the day on, on PlayStation 2. And uh, he says, I'm going to beat some fashion sense into you. And like, <laughs> So I don't know if you heard that a few times back in the day, but that's uh, a shirt for sure, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And I'm like you, man. I'm a button mash master. If I chance upon a a move, I will spam the hell out of it, and hopefully it works. Most of the time, it doesn't. So I play uh, the, out of all the Dragon Ball Z games. I think my favorite is Fighters or Fighter Z, depending on who you ask, whatever it's called. I think that is the the be all end all of the of the of the fighting games for Z. I'm gonna have to check that one out because uh, ever since that fateful day, and I, I it was probably I can see the cover now, and it's it's uh, Goku and Super Saiyan two form, and I, I want to say it's probably Budokai two, um, or maybe it I don't know I'm fucking probably conflating it with the different cover, but I remember it being a Budokai one of them, um, and I probably haven't played a game since my younger brother. Like I said, he just beat the shit out of me. Uh, I, I, I should have known 
did you ever play halo back in the day i did poorly but yes <laughs> i'm glad we're fucking we're gonna connect here on this one kyle um so my younger brother he's uh about two years younger than me and he, that's what he wanted for his birthday one year he wanted halo so it's like all right cool man I'll, I'll get you halo so i go and get him halo on the original xbox and uh we're playing and then like fuck, we load into the game and like 15 seconds and I'm, i get murdered right away i'm like what the fuck and it was just nobody was in front of me nothing i didn't know what happened i just died he was like oh yeah man sometimes it glitches it does that all the time there's a bunch of bugs in this game i was like all right cool so i load back in same thing not even 10 seconds later a slash comes up and then it's blackout screen and then i die i'm like dude what the hell is going on he's like just give it a minute this map is super super buggy you'll be all right and he was like it happens all the time to me and i'm like all right cool so on the third time and this is back in the day where you had to you had to split your screen and you would always get called a screen watcher and you never wanted to watch anybody's screen but i just happened to look up and over and i see him running up behind me and he has the sword for halo so this little prick had been slicing me from behind instantly loading in and shit beat the shit out of me and he had me convinced that it was a bug in the game i literally paused the xbox i put the controller down i told him to go fuck himself and i never played hey i have not played halo halo came out 20 plus years ago i think maybe it was 2001 2002 somewhere around there i have not touched halo will never touch halo again because of my little brother man so oh. it it sucked <laughs> yeah yeah i would just get pwned by all my friends but we would hop online together and play especially halo two and then three and then we kind of fell apart and had all our real lives take precedence after that but uh i played a little bit of the the free one on xbox yeah. uh game pass and i'm terrible at it of course <laughs> and i try to i've moved on to like call of duty and all that stuff and i do a little bit better with zombies than i do because otherwise it, i'm just operation meat shield right here i'm just take me out i get sniped right away hey man but you're you're a vital i'm that same guy too i'm the guy that gets whacked at the beginning of every campaign but i feel like we're vital because it lets the good people behind us set up and just snipe the shit out of people that sniped you so i feel like it's like moving that chess pawn right it's it's you're moving one you're sacrificing that one but that horse or that knight is going to come up and just destroy whoever and put them in the checkmate so i they feel like they need us they need yeah. us to help win they get one point closer to dominance because that's, of us because our sacrifice that's absolutely right man and that's how i kind of justify that's how i kind of try to make my way through life maybe it just maybe it's just a narcissistic way of looking at like hey somebody does need me right but hey it helps me get through the night man so we're hitting that 45 minute mark so i figure we can get into some fans questions but there's always two questions i like to ask before we okay. get into fans questions now when i wrote these fans questions down i apologize i forgot to write your names down because it was oh shit i'm talking to kyle in 12 minutes i gotta write down as many as i possibly can so i forgot your name ladies and gentlemen just know if your question was read you know you wrote it um but the two i like to ask man so your mount rushmore so you get four plus one voice actors who do you look up to or who inspires you to to be the best voice actor you can be he's well, conjuring a spirit one. ladies and gentlemen Mel oh, blank Mel blank of course he is the godfather of voiceover there is none higher than the originator of the looney tunes characters uh i also place on that that great wall billy west oh man i also place on that wall maurice lamarche and rob paulson Ooh. that's tough that's tough you get an honorable mention i get an honorable mention all right i gotta say man troy baker troy baker is one talented mofo yeah listen to that guy's performance most recently on a particularly creepy uh, short on love death and robots on netflix the oh, I love that show animated thing he blew me away i had no idea it was him it's like every time i hear him i never know it's him <laughs> and it's like that's not the only prerequisite but it's like that dude is a fantastic actor it's not just about doing voices we always tell people become a good actor and troy baker he started out with funimation with us in the early 2000s and his star just whoosh, rocketed past anime straight into cartoons and and into video games and motion capture and all that cool stuff and it's been incredible to to watch his path 
that love death and robots show is phenomenal uh have you watched the entire series yet oh yeah as have soon you- as they launch man i marathon so I'm uh, I'm like three episodes away from finishing the last volume they just released. Um, yeah. But uh, I went back and I, I started rewatching the first two seasons just so I could, you know, get in that mindset. And uh, one specifically, you know, just stuck out so much. And it was I can't remember. I can't remember the name of the episode, but it was the werewolf episode where the werewolves were in the Marine Corps. Yeah, dude, that one was so fucking like I'm watching that. I'm like. How far are we away from seeing something like this where you've got all of this crazy shit going on in these the, the yeah. in this world we're in where we can create werewolf? I'm a huge sucker for the universal monsters. Frankenstein was always my or Frankenstein's monster. I get hit on that from the fans. He's like, that's not Frankenstein, it's Frankenstein's monster. Calm down, nerds. I get what you're saying. But <laughs> I, I love <laughs> I love Frankenstein's monster, but I'm a huge sucker for anything werewolves, with the exception of Twilight. They kind of upset me with the werewolves they played in there. Um but just seeing that episode and then I loved, I probably shouldn't say love and Hitler in the same ones, but where they were killing Hitler in that timeline, how they changed a different death and every scenario was something that, that led it out to. And I'm just like, dude, just the animation style, it made it so fun. It was so weird and awkward and just the style they chose for the animation studio. That one was phenomenal, man. It's just that show. I don't know. I don't understand why more people aren't talking about it. I'm pretty sure there is. And I'm just, you know, off in my own little world. But that show is so fucking good, man. In order for it to really succeed, it needs to be uncensored the way it is. And I don't know who else it would survive on. Maybe HBO. Because they show some pretty hardcore stuff, too. Um, I'm hoping that just with word of mouth they're going to continue as far as i understand this is not going to be the last season nor should it be i mean my god the grown-ups need animation yes we do we're living proof that it's like it doesn't have to be hentai to be for adults yes. you can get you can get things that are really story driven and beautiful to behold graphic wise or drawn or cg whatever tools they need they can they can blow us all away and they have love death and robots is top tier man i've auditioned for that show multiple times sad to say i was passed over but i'm gonna keep trying as long as i have uh, an audition opportunity kyle i've got this pen out again who do i need to write over at love death and robots <laughs> crunchy roll on here already you want me to write somebody else uh david fincher uh yeah. and tim miller yeah i'm sure they're easy to get a hold of it's I'll like do I you can. guys watch anime <laughs> it's like i have a feeling that if i'm going to get on a really big project that project's going to have to be spearheaded by someone who's a fellow nerd. <laughs> and they're like, hey, let's get our favorite people from anime on this project and not stunt cast with nothing but big name celebrities. <laughs> well, you heard it for here first, nerds. Get Kyle. Reach out to these two men. Um, reach out to anybody on that show and drop the name Kyle. Um, the next one. Uh, two animes or two shows that you're watching. Obviously, we just... Uh, we just gave one with Love, Death, and Robots. But if you didn't have those, that one, uh, what two animes or what two shows that you're watching that you would recommend folks to check out? If it could just be any show, good Lord. Uh, I loved an alien invasion show on Apple Plus called Invasion. It's mm-hmm. only one season so far, but it, is, it has just been the best alien invasion show ever. And it's, all, it's from the perspective of all these unrelated characters and how they'll eventually cross over and meet, but Invasion, and it is, uh, it's killer. There's another one on Apple Plus, too, called calls. calls. And what it is, Calls is nothing but phone calls, and it's a really cool audio drama that has kind of a sci-fi flair to it. It's a little Twilight Zone-ish, but the acting is incredible in it and it's got a lot of uh, there's there there are some anime voice people in there like kyle mccarley and uh calls even though it's audio you can watch it on apple plus and it has like waveforms that respond yeah. you know just like a, a, a an audio a visualizer mm-hmm. with sound files and all that it works like that and it's really compelling to listen to the fright of these people on on the phone call, hearing all this disjointed chaos going on. 
and the different way they graphically represent that on screen and, and the crossover between people talking and all that stuff. So calls, it, it's something that came out about a year or two ago mm -hmm. and found, uh, okay. uh, and sorry, uh, Invasion, those two. Apple Plus is just knocking it out of the park, man. Ted Lasso, there's so many great shows. Now, I usually don't do this, but I'm going to recommend one to you. So I cook for a living. Oh, I cook for the day job. Uh, and I do this for fun, man. Um, so have you, do you have Hulu? I do. Yes. Have you ever checked? Uh, it came out in the last couple of weeks, but have you ever checked out The Bear? No. This is one of the most direct, rep is most accurate depiction of what kitchen life is and just the stress um, I don't use this term very lightly because I've had so many of my friends, I was never in war. So I, I, I like putting that out there. I was never in war. I was in places that absolutely hated us as being, um, Navy, Marines, army, air force. They just did not like us. Right. Yeah. So I always like to preface that with never been to war, but I know some friends that have some true PTSD for some wartime they've seen. Right. Mm -hmm. So in this show, the show is based on a chef that was coming from the Thomas Kellers of the world. So if you want to think of, I don't know if you're, you know, super nerdy into food, but Thomas Keller is our version of a uh, Gordon Ramsay. He's just not as much of a, of a dick, right. Outwardly. Um, so he's like the height of American cuisine when it comes to fine dining. Right. So they have these rankings with Michelin stars, right. So Thomas Keller is almost every restaurant is three stars. So he is the pinnacle of, culinary cuisine in America. Um, so he's coming from, he's cut from that cloth. The chef is cut from that cloth and he has a brother that also cooks, but he cooks in a shithole in Chicago. It's mm -hmm. called like the original beef. It's just a dirt. It, it, you look at it and you're like, I'm probably going to get hepatitis from eating this beef sandwich here, but I'm going to give it a shot because the line's out the door. Uh, his brother ends up killing himself and he has to drop what he's doing, working in these, this high stress, this, this kitchens where he's developing and he's got all this PTSD he's trying to work through and he's trying to implement a brigade, a French style brigade um, into a place where it's, I don't mean this in a disparaging way because I, Denny's is one of my favorite restaurants, but it's like trying to go from uh, the highest level to a Denny's and trying to get them to understand what is so important about perfect night cuts, what is so important about having a chef coat that is clean pressed uh an apron that is clean pressed your your entire station is clean there's no nothing is out of place mise en place you have everything in this place everything is perfect this is like the first show i've ever seen where it's depicted like there's so much like i watch this and i can only watch one episode at a time even though i want to continually just burn through these the series because i start feeling like i'm in i'm at work because it's just all these feelings that they're depicting all of this this drama that's going on, all of this chaos that's going on. I'm like, dude, I was, we were just doing this at the restaurant I work at when we took over this huge regime change about two years ago for the place I work at. Now we were just doing everything that they were doing here. We were just doing. So it's, Ooh. it's crazy to see something that you're so close with on a day-to-day -day basis. Cause it's your job. And then you see them nail it in Hollywood. You're like, Oh fuck. They've got their finger on the pulse for this. I cannot say enough good things. I think it's like eight or 10 episodes. They're 22 minute long um, with Hulu, no ads. Um, phenomenal show. It's called the bear. It is. I can't, it, it's going to win shit ton of awards this year. The guy, I can't remember the guy from shameless, but the guy from shameless is in there. Um, it's produced by Maddie Matheson was a phenomenal chef. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my recommendation, Kyle. If you want to check it out, man, if you like, nice. Cookies. Hey, while you're on Hulu, what we do in the shadows. I love that show. That's right. <laughs> it's a fun one. Starting soon. Can't wait. I love that show. Yeah, it's so fun. I try to get my wife into it. She's like, can you just stop asking me to watch these weird shows with you? I'm like, yeah, but you watch these dumbass Grey's Anatomy shows. I want to watch something with you too. And she's like, yeah, but you bitch about the shows. I'm like, no, no, no. I don't bitch about those shows. I just talk about the inaccuracies that they're not going to sit there. Like every doctor show, you've got one guy or one gal jumping on a fucking chest of a person as they're coming in from the, from the ambulance, they're pumping on their chest. They haven't washed their hands. The person's not really dying. He's just passed out, you know? So he, he's pumping on his chest or they're cutting into somebody without gloves on. They have no face. Mask. It just doesn't make any sense. I'm just pointing out the inaccuracies. She's like, but I don't do that to your shows. I'm like, no, but you don't watch my shows and you call them stupid. So you do that just by not doing it. So I try yeah. to rationalize. I never win. <laughs> oh man. 
Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, it's fun being married. We've almost been married for 14 years now, 13 years going on 14. Um, the third one, before we get to the fans questions, man. So what we like to do is we like to hear who you guys would recommend. So is there a person out there that you've worked with? It doesn't have to be a voice actor, it could be a writer, it could be an animator, it could be somebody else, it could be somebody in music, man, that you think would have a great time on the show that we should reach out to. This is the animation recommendation for the week. Mm, golly. Well, if you could, I don't know how to get a hold of him, but Frank Welker. Oh yeah, he's been on uh, he's been on the chase for quite some time. Yeah. I imagine himself. anyone who could could stop him long enough to actually interview the man cuz what a what stories he must have from working in this industry since the 60s, right? Since he's still the youngest, he's still Freddie on, on Scooby-Doo, and he's in his uh, late 60s, early 70s. Uh, that would just, that would be amazing. I think Peter Cullen, I yep. bet that guy's full of some incredible stories. Here he some voice, optimists back in the day. And a voice on him like an angel. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yes. There's a few of those guys that you just, you talked top tier earlier, man, and then those those guys are for sure. Obviously, your Mount Rushmore is pretty deep, man. I, I had Billy on uh, the first year. He was like episode three. Jesus oh, Christ. Cool. That dude, I, I, I was like, man, you're fucking royalty. And he was like, well, I wouldn't say that, but I'm glad you did. I was like, dude, I've literally had you and Rob on like two weeks apart. I've like, I've done the same thing I did in like middle school. I peaked right now on this podcast. There's nothing that is going to get better from here on in. I was like, I've right. had you two guys on. It's just like, and I wasn't wrong. I've kind of peaked. That's, you know, just me being self-deprecating. But <clears throat> So that's the animation recommendation. So we're going to rotate into the fans questions. And uh, when my son asked who I was talking to, he's like, all right, well, you're going to ask him this one. So uh, he, he found out that, you know, you were Gohan and he was like, well, I know your favorite character is Piccolo. Now he doesn't know. And I didn't know that you guys do everything separate. However, I got to imagine you and Chris have talked to each other once or twice. So with him being your dad, do you have any story? Cause he just wanted to know what it was like working with Chris. Did you have any fun stories about working with Chris? Oh, so not, yeah. not so much working, but do you have a fun story about Chris? Actually? Yes. Because he directed all of Z mm -hmm. and uh, he's directed me on uh, the movies and uh, a lot of the games. And he's got this incredible sense of humor he loves to crack me up because it's just apparently easy to do. So he'll, while the beeps are playing, he'll say something like something to crack me up. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly I just blow the take. So there's just hours and hours of, uh, you know, audio blackmail sitting on the hard drives up at Funimation because Seven <laughs> likes to, uh, he likes to, to mess with voice actors heads. And um, he used to be able to do that with their cell phones before we got passcodes, he would just, you know, if you set your phone down, he would just be the ultimate prankster and reassign all your, your caller numbers. And what a dick. Take a, take a really stupid selfie of himself and make it the cup, the wallpaper. And yeah, yeah, that was the thing. It's like, if you have a phone, don't leave it near Sabbath, man. Ah, oh. he'll start changing autocorrect to drop a bunch of f-bombs and suddenly you're typing something and suddenly some like you're a douche canoe and it's like, i was trying to type umbrella you know it's like good god yeah that's so, some bullshit you're going around and rearranging people's apps and icons like i like i look at my like i'll use my wife's phone if my phone's somewhere i'm like hey can i use your phone real quick i gotta google something and i'm trying to scroll and i'm looking through the google i'm trying to look for the google app i'm like dude how are your apps not in in alphabetical order and she was like well why are your apps in alphabetical order i'm like because it's a logical thing to do you can i, I need google so i'm going to go to page two because that's where all the g shit's at and she was like well that's dumb i'm like well i've been sitting here looking for fucking google for like an hour now and she's like well, just go get your phone i'm like ah oh, that's not the point but just messing with somebody's icons man that's 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 diabolical shit that's some villain shit man that's not some super right shit. that's dark yeah, yes He's got a dark side to him. Oh, um, he does. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was a great story, man. Um, so this one was really, really fun. Uh, you had a choice of taking thick gum or thin gum out to dinner. Who are you taking out? Mm. And who's paying for the bill? That, that second part was my part of the question. but I think I'll take out fat gum because he knows how to have fun with food. You yeah. know, all the muscle-bound 
in shape people, they're not going to go too crazy. I mean, yeah, they're going to need lots of calories and carbs and all that, but it's not necessarily all the fun stuff with the, with the creams and the gravies and all that stuff, all the fried stuff that, oh, yeah. that hardens your arteries and gives you diabetes and all this fun, negative health stuff. Let's just go out with, with fat gum. Yeah. Cause he's a big, lovable, squishy dude. He's, there's a lot to love, and I imagine that he knows all the greatest restaurants to hit. Where are you taking him? Good God, man. I'm in L.A. There's so much great food here. There's a, a local bo- joint here in Burbank called Chili John's. Mm-hmm. Not normally a chili guy, but hot, spicy beef chili on top of rice. Oh, that's the kicker. Throw some a little bit of apple cider vinegar on top just to... Just to cleanse the oh, palate yeah. just a little bit some onions cheese and sour cream Woo, that's good and of course sushi's great here oh dude you know just just load up on uh hand rolls or or whatnot man i love spicy tuna anything salmon anything sushi and chili man that's going to be a smelly 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 car ride on the way home man it will it will and then we have to get good pizza too there's there's you know depending on what kind do you want do you want chicago style do you want new york style do you want there's all kinds here this is the melting pot literally here so it's funny whenever my wife and i go out to dinner i'm uh, i'm not a dessert guy i like i'll eat it every once in a while but uh traditionally i'm not i'm not a dessert guy but going out with me i don't i don't know if you have too many chef friends or people that cook for a living uh, but going out to them is like going out with somebody probably like fat gum. You look at the kitchen table and you think 20 people are ordering and it's just like two dudes sitting there. Cause that's what I, I, I want. I want, I love small plates. So I love tapas. So a little, this little, that little, this, and then it's just fucking sharing. Um, but, but uh, just seeing, seeing that level, like, Oh fuck dude, I just want sushi so bad right now. Um, <laughs> that's all i can think about you said sushi i was like that but going out with my wife and stuff she would order dessert and we were at this uh, we were at the seafood restaurant uh down in orlando it was called the osprey tavern at the time it's called the osprey now and then right across the street is a place called sato sushi and they had some of the best sushi i've ever had not the greatest sushi some of the best sushi i've had in orlando um and we're traditionally about 20 years behind everybody when it comes to culinary food we're starting to make a come up uh florida is in general but uh uh, so I would go across the street because they had gyosas over there, which are essentially fried, uh, fried dumpling. Um, and my wife's like, what are you going to get for dessert? I was like, oh, they've got the brisket pork and chive uh, gyosas back over. And uh, they just put a tweet out or an Instagram post that says they're back in. They've, they're they re-rolling them. So I'm going to go get that for dessert. And she was like, that's not really dessert. And I'm like, I'm going to eat 12 of them. And it's going to be a nightcap. And it's going to be a great dessert. So you enjoy this carrot cake. And I'm going to go have some gyosas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, can, I can appreciate going to get a slice after chili and, and sushi funny um, you just mentioned orlando i was just there a couple of weeks ago for anime festival orlando yeah i know i wanted to go so bad but i got called in to work <laughs> um and this. old matsuri in jacksonville this weekend yeah that's yeah, a little bit of a drive it's about a two-hour no. drive for me uh any chance you're gonna tampa? be down here? i'll be in tampa tampa's, tampa's two tampa hours are you gonna be are you gonna be at the one in ocala in september no, I was there last year. Yeah, okay. Because I know uh, uh, Bakugo Clifford is going to be there. Um, so nice. And there's going to be some that. Yeah, that's my guy and uh, that's my guy and my, my hero. Him and Endeavor. I love him and Endeavor and Shigaraki. Fuck, Shigaraki is so good. Um, shit, I lost my. I lost my. Oh, here we are. Um, who's going to win in a fight? Fat Gum on a full belly, or Gohan? at the movie so they're gonna take gohan from this movie where he's gonna become the man we all knew he was gonna be or fat gum full of calories mm. are you putting your money on i guess is what we're getting at perhaps a little biased but uh i've been waiting a long time for gohan yeah so i'm gonna edge a little towards uh towards the g-man there just a little yeah. bit <laughs> you know now is there uh here's another one is did you um my handwriting is so atrocious uh did you ever uh audition for anybody that wasn't fat gum did you have multiple auditions for my hero was only for fat gum just for fat gum um originally when the show uh was going to be dubbed 
uh, they kind of had a deal where it's like, you have to be willing to fly out to Texas. This was years ago, but, mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, I couldn't really afford that. It's like, you have to come out on your own dime and we can't guarantee you, uh, you know, enough hours to make your money back. So you have to decide, is this something you really want? And I decided against it, even though I knew that the show would be huge. And I figured maybe as the show goes on and it turns out I was right, that they're going to introduce different heroes and the technology came along to the point where we could do long distance stuff. And it's like, it came at just the right time. So yeah. I got to read for fat gum and I didn't have to fly back to Texas to do it either. So hey man, that everything, worked out great. everything works out when it, when it's supposed to work out. And yeah. uh, this is the last one. Uh, and th her name has come up so many times and I don't understand why I just haven't asked this question. Um, okay. Colleen, man, she is phenomenal with picking you guys and gals for the characters you guys play. She, I've, I am amazed at somebody that is like her or like anybody that does that, where that she can hear something or she's got these connections with you guys and gals and she knows how to plug and play you guys into the spot. Like when I see you and I hear you, obviously you voice fat gum, but you embody that character. When I hear you, like you are, I can't imagine somebody else. It's the same thing with Lamelia and Rico. Can't imagine anybody else. Same thing with Lucy and Uraraka. Can't imagine anybody else. Monica and Frop. It's just, it's so well cast, man. So I got to imagine you've worked with her for quite some time and you yeah. guys are, are pretty good friends, man. So do you have a favorite yeah. Colleen story? I obviously asked you a favorite Chris story, but you got a favorite Colleen one because she doesn't come up enough in any of my chats. And I want to make sure that we're giving her her fucking, we're taking <laughs> our hats off and her just dues, man. Right. Like I said, she plugs Colleen, and plays you guys so phenomenally. Amazing director, amazing actor, and amazing casting director too. Um, no particular thing, although I do love cracking up my directors. So if I blow a take and they start losing it. Oh, you ham it up, huh? Loses it too. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because sometimes I think what we need uh, during the, I want to, I want to say pressure, but during that intense time when we have only so much time to get so many lines done and we got to move on to the next one. You want to remember to have fun. Mm -hmm. And not only are you doing the best you can, but I'm going to uh, not intentionally screw up or anything, but when I, when I fail, I try to fail spectacularly. So <laughs> you're nailing that landing is what you're saying. <laughs> I am totally just dive bombing and crashing like nobody's business it is just glorious epic fail that'll become the meme of history um so yeah when, if i can do that and i have and i'm sure if you ever get to talk to her many many actors have cracked her up <laughs> so that's that's uh that's always a fun achievement i think if i can crack any director up at least once during a session, whether I change the dialogue into a movie quote or a song lyric. Yeah. And then suddenly I, it becomes an earworm and then they start singing. It's like, oh, damn it, Kyle. You know, it's like, ah. this is the one that always gets me and my wife does it and she will do it. So I have horrible hearing, but my wife will do it and then she'll do it so low where I'll catch it and then I'll start doing so it's Menomina from, um, oh shit, was it uh, the Muppets? Sesame yeah. Street. Yeah, oh, the yeah. Muppets. So that one, that one in particular, that always gets me. And she does it at least once or twice a week. And then she'll just go, dun, 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 dun. and then she'll just walk away. And then I'm in the kitchen, I'm cooking. And then by the end of, I don't know, fucking 10, 15 minutes, I'm belly, you know, just bellowing out the Menomina song, man. So I, uh, <clears throat> I can kind of get it when, you, when you're sitting here talking about, I'm just going to get this line in there. I'm going to get this song in there. And then they're fucked for the rest of the day. Cause they're going to be singing this and they're going to remember the name Kyle. A bear. <laughs> they will. And especially if me and my wife are watching something and the character on screen says the word phenomenon. And then I'll do 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 do. You can't unhear it. Mine does too, man. That's the first thing she does because she knows it's it's fucking going to register right there. Well, Kyle, this has been fun. Ladies and gentlemen, you can also find Kyle. Kyle's a, uh, Kyle's a, a, God, 
I butchered the fuck out of that one. I'm not going to fix it in post because we're not human, man. Kyle also hosts a podcast. So where can people find your podcast and where can people find you if they want to say, hey, Kyle, man, I like that stuff you do. Thank you. Uh, at Kyle A. Bear on Twitter. That's where I'm active most. At Boombox Pod at, uh, is also on Twitter. Uh, the Intergalactic Boombox at boomboxpod.com. Yes. The Intergalactic Boombox is just me talking to myself and multiple characters I've created. Aliens, conspiracy theorists, Karens, all sorts of different people <laughs> that I can interact with. And I post-produce to sound like we're all in the same room. It's got theater of the mind, you know, acapella music, sound effects, all sort of fun stuff. Basically a 15-minute uh, theater of the mind excursion that usually post every Friday. I missed last week, so I'm probably going to post early this week just to make up for it because I was just bleh, I was down under the weather. But I'm back. So at Boombox Pod on Twitter, boomboxpod.com. Check out the Intergalactic Boombox. I hope you guys like it. And uh, of course, check my Twitter at Kyle A. Bear or at Kyle A. Bear on Instagram and follow. Uh, I put all my con updates and project updates and all that fun stuff. Follow, follow, follow. Absolutely, man. And uh, <clears throat> I've come to your I've come to your profiles quite a few times just to get some laughs. So the memes you post up there are top tier if you will man I, i've gotten i've laughed at some of the ones a lot harder than i should have and it's <laughs> it's always the ones where you're like that's funny and then you go back to and you're like no that one's really funny and <laughs> nobody really at funny. home is going to appreciate this shit like i am right now <laughs> love it love it love it yeah man yeah, so the internet Oh, I, I absolutely man well he's been kyle i've been julian this has been a blast this has been the what's in my head podcast and this has been another piece of your childhood Good night. My guest next week is legendary animator Nick Ranieri. Enjoy the teaser. And he, uh, Chuck said he wanted to meet some of the animators who worked on Little Mermaid after mm -hmm. it was done, right? And so he invited me, Andreas, Duncan, and one other person, I can't remember, down to meet Chuck Jones at his place. And so I said, yeah, I'd, I'd like to. Yeah, it'd be great. And so we spent the afternoon with Chuck Jones, you know, and it's totally oh, cool. And, and uh, he wrote in my book, uh, Love Your Work, uh, admiringly, Chuck Jones. <laughs> like, this is great. So there's plenty of times that I met him. But he, he was just, it was, it was amazing to, to work with somebody that you, you know, inspired you all those yeah. years ago. And that's just, that was, a, that was an amazing uh, experience. It's always fun to hear you guys fan out like I fan out when I get to talk to you guys. Like like I said, it it's it's really cool to get to see because just for a second there, I saw Nick at 12 years old watching these these cartoons. I saw him at 15 years old and he wanted to take this more serious. And then he's in this animation game. He's chasing these heroes. He's chasing these idols. Now he's on that same level and there's people that look at you the same way you look at Chuck and the way same way Chuck looked at who he looked up to and just it.